With so many great characters to explore, so much lore to unravel, and so many weird variations of droids to catalogue, there simply isn't room for everything to take centre stage in Star Wars. And so, while you can't have missed the destruction of the Death Stars, or Anakin's transformation into Darth Vader, you might not have noticed these incredibly subtle moments that actually turned out to be very, very, very important. Also, just so you know, this list will only be focusing on theatrically released Star Wars films, although they may tie into the TV output on occasion. So with that in mind, I'm Gareth from What Culture Star Wars, and here are 10 huge Star Wars moments that happened in the background. Number 10, C-3PO gagged Star Wars Episode 6 Return of the Jedi. In Return of the Jedi, there's a very famous scene where a disguised Princess Leia revives Han Solo from Carbonite and delivers the whole someone who loves you line. It's a nice bit of cinema, but there's just one thing wrong with it. After the two romantic rebels reunite, the all-too-familiar laugh of Jabba the Hutt rings out. It turns out that he and his cronies have been watching the whole thing, including C-3PO, which is all very creepy. 3PO had been given to Jabba as a gift by Luke Skywalker, which was all part of the Jedi's plan to infiltrate the Crime Lord's palace. However, could he not have warned Han and Leia that they were being spied on? That seems like something he would probably do, right? Well, if you look closely at when Jabba and Co come out of hiding, again, very creepy, you'll see exactly why the protocol droid was silent. One of the Hutt's posse is holding their hand over 3PO's mouth, stopping him from giving the game away. This could mean that our gold-plated friend did try and warn his comrades, but was cut off before he could do so. Either way, it's just nice to know that 3PO isn't that much of a coward. Number 9, The Tracking Droid, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. When fleeing Naboo in The Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Queen Amidala and the rest of their gang all end up on the desert planet of Tatooine. Here they come across a young boy named Anakin, who just so happens to be the prophesied child who will one day bring balance to the Force. What are the chances, eh? They're not the only interlopers on little Annie's homeworld, though. The good guys are being hunted down by about one-third of Darth Maul's entire screen time. The horned Sith lands on the barren world and dispatches a group of tracking droids to find his prey. The audience is left to assume that they were successful, as they never actually see the robots at work. Or do they? After Anakin wins his freedom in a pod race, Qui-Gon is seen talking to his former owner, Watto. And in the background of this shot, you can very much see one of Maul's droids. This is a neat little detail that really didn't have to be included in the scene, but it does a great job of tying the Tatooine portion of the film together. Now, what is your favourite prequel moment? Is it that aforementioned pod race fun or something else? Let me know in the comments section below. Number 8, IG-88 Gets Scrapped Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back One of the many things that the main canon Star Wars movies offered just a slight glimpse at was the shady world of bounty hunting. Outside of the Fets, the lives of the galaxy's lone rangers weren't really picked up on. It would fall to the expanded universe to tell those tales. As for the films, the most bounty hunters seen in one place are the group assembled by Darth Vader aboard his Super Star Destroyer in The Empire Strikes Back. Boba Fett is there, as his fan favourite, Bosk, and a tall, slender robot is also standing next to the fabled Mandalorian. This is IG-88, one of many murderous IG units created with the sole purpose of killing. This one actually meets a rather sticky end, however, as its broken body can be seen in the junkyards of Cloud City later in the movie. Yep, that's the broken bot right there. Number 7, Kanan Jarrus's voice, Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Episode 7 to 9 not only gave Disney a chance to rake in that sweet, sweet Star Wars dollar, but it also offered the opportunity to sneak in references to all the stuff that had come out since the House of Mouse took control of Lucasfilm in 2012. This included Star Wars Rebels, an animated show set between the fall of the Republic and the events of A New Hope. Rebels not only provided fans with more context as to what went down before the original films, but it also introduced plenty of new characters for people to fawn over. One of them was Kanan Jarrus, who was portrayed by Freddy Prince Jr. A Padawan who survived Order 66, Jarrus eventually learns to embrace his Force-sensitive ways after years of repressing them. He becomes one of the heroes of the Rebels' story, before sacrificing himself to save his friends. I'm still not over it. But Jarrus actually turns up in the the sequel trilogy, although not in the way you'd think. 
During Rey's final battle with Palpatine in Rise of Skywalker, Jarrus is one of the many Jedi voices who encourages her during this climactic fight. Number 6. Red 5 Down – Rogue One – A Star Wars Story Rogue One – A Star Wars Story did a fantastic job explaining how the Rebel Alliance got their hands on the original Death Star plans. In Gareth Edwards' excellent one-off movie, fans got to know a little bit more about the various squadrons of fighter pilots that would later serve in the Rebellion's fiercest space battles. One of them is Red Squadron, which will play a key role in the assault on both Death Stars. In Rogue One, they get involved in the film's climactic battle on the planet Scarif. During the skirmish, one of the members of the squad is blown up and killed, though. This unlucky fella's call sign was Red 5, which should sound familiar to any self-respecting Star Wars fan. Red 5 is the position that none other than Luke Skywalker himself would take up when he joined the Alliance fleet. This character's death in Rogue One opened the door for Skywalker to join, which in turn may have saved the entire galaxy. Number 5. The Debut of Aura Singh – Star Wars Episode 1 – The Phantom Menace You can't take anything for granted in Star Wars, because even the most minor of characters might one day end up playing a huge role in the saga. One actual example of this happens during the Boonta Eve classic pod race in Star Wars Episode 1 – The Phantom Menace. As Anakin, Saboba, and all the rest of your favourites whiz through the canyons, a female-looking figure with pale white skin and dark red hair can be seen watching them from above. This is the very first time Star Wars fans are introduced to Aura Singh. Singh is a very powerful bounty hunter with some elements of Force sensitivity. She's also one of the folks who trains Boba Fett in the ways of combat eventually joining him on a failed mission to assassinate Mace Windu. You know, after he decapitated his daddy. Singh turns up all over the place in the Star Wars mythos, even getting a mention in Solo. And this blink and you'll miss it cameo was the catalyst for all of it. Number 4. Black Saber – Rogue One – A Star Wars Story Back to Rogue One now and its tense finale on Scarif. Jin Erso and her crew have discovered that this is where the plans for the Death Star are being kept. They go off on a mission to retrieve the data, which goes really well for them and definitely doesn't end with everyone getting killed. Obviously, there's more than just one set of plans on Scarif. There's a whole building there full of the Empire's deepest and darkest secrets. While scanning the archives, Urso reads out a bunch of different file names, and one of them is Black Saber, which isn't the only time this concept has been mentioned in Star Wars. Black Saber is surely referring to the Dark Saber, a powerful ancient lightsaber that was first introduced in the Clone Wars animated show. It is most prominently featured in The Mandalorian, serving as one of the main MacGuffins of the second season. This line from Rogue One proves that the Empire had knowledge of the Saber very early on, which would explain how it eventually fell into the hands of Moff Gideon. Number 3. The Spielberg Lucas Shared Universe in The Phantom Menace, during one of the many scintillating galactic senate scenes, Queen Amidala calls for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum. This moment sets in motion the chain of events that leads to Palpatine becoming Chancellor. Then it's the emergency powers, Order 66, the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise, etc, etc. But as the various alien representatives react to Amidala's words, you can spot a group of extraterrestrials that look very much like, well, the extraterrestrial. Combine this with a scene from that Spielberg movie where the main character seems to recognize a kid dressed up as Yoda, and it's conspiracy theory time, baby. This little detail surely proves that E.T. and Star Wars take place within the same shared universe. Or maybe this was just George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, who are good friends in real life, making little cute references to each other's work. But where's the fun in that, eh? Number 2. Admiral Akbar's Death – Star Wars Episode 8: The Last Jedi When The Force Awakens hit cinemas like a freight train in December 2015, Star Wars fans were delighted to see several obscure characters from the original trilogy make their triumphant return. One of them was everyone's favourite trap-warning Mon Calamari, Admiral Akbar. Akbar most famously appeared in Return of the Jedi, of course, leading the charge against the second Death Star. In Force Awakens, he was shown to have joined General Leia's resistance, proving once again to be a valuable asset. And then he just died. At the very start of the next movie, The Last Jedi, Akbar is one of the characters killed when TIE fighters attack Leia's cruiser. There's no fanfare, no last words, nothing. That's simply the end of the good Admiral. Akbar's throwaway death got a lot of people very upset, and understandably. Should Akbar's death have been given more time? Who's to say, but at least his legacy will never die thanks to three little words. 
And number one, the ice cream maker, Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. For those in the know, there are few Star Wars characters funnier than Will Rowe Hood. Hood appears very, very briefly in The Empire Strikes Back as a citizen of the floating city above Bespin. As Lando Calrissian and Leia are running through the city corridors as it is evacuated, this guy in an orange jumpsuit passes in front of them. And what is he carrying under his left arm? An ice cream maker, of course. It was surely never intended this way, but Hood developed a massive cult following thanks to his frantic efforts to rescue his favourite frozen treat. What a guy, eh? But as with everything in Star Wars, there's actually more to this guy than meets the eye. Thanks to the expanded universe, aka the Legends part of this galaxy far, far away, it was eventually revealed that Hood was a gas miner working for a rebellion sympathetic company on Cloud City. The ice cream maker was actually a hard drive full of data on the corporation's clients. Hood was destroying it so it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. So after all this time and mockery, it turns out that our boy was actually a massive hero all along. And that's our list. Know any other huge Star Wars moments that happened in the background? Well, let me know all about them in the comments section right down below. And don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you like this sort of thing, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Star Wars. May the force be with you as always. Thanks for watching today, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.